The test results came back. Your PSA level is higher than last year. Your doctor said, let's keep watching this. And suddenly, that number is all you can think about 4.8. Last year, it was 3.6. You go home, you search online, vitamins for prostate health, hundreds of results, supplements promising to help, but which ones actually have research behind them? And which ones might be doing more harm than good? I spent years digging through research studies trying to answer these exact questions, not for work, not for a degree, just because I needed to know. And what I found in those studies changed everything I thought I understood about vitamins and prostate health. Today, I'm sharing what I learned. Five vitamins that research suggests may have concerning associations when taken at high doses and three vitamins that multiple large studies have linked with better prostate health patterns. Everything I'll share today comes from published research. Studies from major institutions like Harvard, Johns Hopkins, and the National Institutes of Health. I'll tell you exactly where each finding comes from so you can look it up yourself. At the end, I'll give you a simple summary you can take to your doctor to have an informed conversation. If you want that summary now, type research in the comments, I'll send it right over. But first, the most important thing, this is educational information only. I'm not giving medical advice. Never change anything about your health routine without talking to your own doctor first. If your PSA is elevated, you need proper medical care. This video is about understanding the research, not replacing your healthcare team. Okay, let's dive into what the studies actually show, starting with five vitamins that surprised me. Number five. Vitamin E, synthetic, high dose. What the SELECT trial revealed. Most prostate supplements contain vitamin E. For years, it was considered helpful. Then came the SELECT trial. This massive study, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, followed over 35,000 men for years. Half took vitamin E, half took placebo. The results were not what researchers expected. Men taking 400 international units of synthetic vitamin E daily showed a statistically significant increase in certain unfavorable prostate outcomes. The researchers stopped the trial early because of these findings. Here's what matters. The form of vitamin E makes a huge difference. Most supplements use synthetic vitamin E, listed as DL-alpha tocopherol, on labels. Notice the DL at the start. Natural vitamin E from food is D-alpha tocopherol with just D. That small letter difference represents a big difference in how your body processes it. Research suggests synthetic forms at high doses may actually promote oxidative stress in some tissues. Does this mean all vitamin E is bad? No. Vitamin E from foods like almonds, sunflower seeds, and spinach appears beneficial. The concern is specifically high-dose synthetic supplements. What can you do? Check your supplements. Look at the vitamin E content and form. If it says DL-alpha-tocopherol and it's over 100 international units, that's synthetic and relatively high dose. Talk to your doctor about whether it makes sense for you. If you want vitamin E, a handful of almonds or sunflower seeds provides it naturally. Number four. Folic acid, synthetic, high dose, the surprising journal findings. Folic acid is added to most multivitamins. It's in fortified cereals and breads. It sounds healthy. But research on folic acid and prostate health tells an interesting story. A study in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute followed men taking folic acid supplements for years. They found that men taking one milligram or more of synthetic folic acid daily showed different patterns in prostate tissue compared to men with lower intake. Here's what researchers think is happening. Synthetic folic acid is chemically different from natural folate found in food. High doses can accumulate in your blood in an unmetabolized form. Some research suggests this accumulation might influence cell growth in ways that aren't ideal. Natural folate from leafy greens, lentils, and beans doesn't cause this buildup. Your body processes it and uses what it needs. What can you do? Check your multivitamin label. If folic acid content is above 400 micrograms, 
and especially if it's close to 1,000 micrograms, talk to your doctor about it. Meanwhile, two cups of spinach, a cup of lentils, or a serving of asparagus gives you natural folate without the concerns. Number three, vitamin A, retinol, high dose, the form that matters. Vitamin A is essential. We need it for vision, immunity, and cell health. But for prostate health, research shows the form and dose matter a lot. Studies have found mixed results with high-dose preformed vitamin A, called retinol. Some research suggests very high intake from supplements may be associated with less favorable prostate patterns. Retinol accumulates in tissues. At high levels, this might affect cell growth and differentiation. Interestingly, beta-carotene, which your body converts to vitamin A only as needed, doesn't show these same concerns, your body self-regulates it. Most multivitamins contain preformed vitamin A as retinal palmitate. If it's above 5,000 international units, research suggests this could be on the high side. What can you do? Look at your supplement labels. Check the form and amount of vitamin A. Talk to your doctor about whether your current intake is appropriate. For most people, getting vitamin A from colorful vegetables like sweet potatoes, carrots, and spinach provides beta-carotene that your body can safely convert as needed. Number two, selenium, excessive amounts, the U-shaped curve. Selenium is a trace mineral, often in prostate formulas. Some research supports its benefits at the right dose. But the SELECT trial also studied selenium. Men took 200 micrograms daily. The results didn't show the expected benefits. In some groups, there were actually unfavorable associations. Researchers learned that selenium follows a U-shaped curve. Too little is problematic. The right amount may be beneficial. Too much swings back to concerning, here's the issue. Many foods are rich in selenium. Just two Brazil nuts provide about 200 micrograms. Tuna, halibut, chicken, and whole grains add more. If you eat these regularly and take a supplement with 100 to 200 micrograms, your total could be excessive. Research suggests too much selenium can create oxidative stress rather than reducing it. What can you do? Think about your diet first. If you eat Brazil nuts, fish, or poultry regularly, you might be getting plenty without supplements. If you do supplement, keeping it low, maybe 50 to 100 micrograms, might be wiser than 200. Or ask your doctor about testing selenium levels before supplementing. Number one, calcium high-dose supplements, the Harvard studies. This one surprises everyone. What does calcium have to do with the prostate? Quite a bit, according to research from Harvard and other institutions, multiple studies found associations between very high calcium intake, especially from supplements, and less favorable prostate health patterns. Men getting more than 2,000 milligrams daily, particularly from supplements rather than food, showed different prostate characteristics in research. Why? One theory is that very high calcium interferes with vitamin D metabolism. Vitamin D appears important for prostate health, and high calcium may reduce how well your body uses it. Another theory involves calcium's effects on hormone signaling and cell processes. This doesn't mean calcium is bad. Moderate amounts from food are fine and important for bones. The concern is high-dose supplements stacked on top of calcium-rich diets. What can you do? Add up your total calcium from all sources, Yogurt, milk, cheese, leafy greens, fortified foods, plus any supplements. If it's over 2,000 milligrams total, talk to your doctor. Research suggests getting most calcium from food rather than large supplements may be better for prostate health. Those are five vitamins that research raised questions about at high doses. Synthetic vitamin E over 400 international units. Synthetic folic acid over one milligram. Preformed vitamin A over 5,000 international units. Selenium over 200 micrograms. Calcium supplements over 1,000 milligrams. Now let's look at three vitamins that research has linked with better prostate health. Number three, vitamin K2, the European study findings. Most people have never heard of vitamin K2. 
but research over the past two decades has revealed something interesting. Vitamin K2 directs calcium to bones where you need it and away from soft tissues where you don't want calcium building up. A large European study called EPIC followed thousands of men for over a decade. Men with higher vitamin K2 intake showed more favorable prostate health patterns over time. The association was strong enough that researchers called for more investigation. The proposed mechanism makes sense. By keeping calcium out of prostate tissue, K2 may help maintain healthier cellular environments. K2 also appears to have anti-inflammatory properties. The challenge is that K2 is rare in Western diets. It's in fermented foods like natto and in small amounts in grass-fed dairy and egg yolks. Most people don't eat these regularly. What can you do? Talk to your doctor about vitamin K2, especially if you take vitamin D or calcium research studies typically look at 100 to 200 micrograms daily of the MK7 form. You can also eat more K2-rich foods. Grass-fed butter, pastured egg yolks, and certain cheeses provide some natto, provides the most by far, if you can find it. Important note, if you take blood thinners, K2 affects clotting, so medical supervision is essential. Number two, vitamin D3, the consistent research link. If I could only talk about one vitamin, it would be vitamin D. The research here is extensive and consistent. Vitamin D receptors are abundant in prostate tissue. When vitamin D binds to them, it influences over 200 genes related to cell growth and inflammation. A 2019 study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology looked at over 2,400 men. Those with vitamin D levels below 20 nanograms per milliliter showed notably different prostate patterns compared to men with levels above 40 dozens of other studies found similar associations. Higher vitamin D consistently links with more favorable prostate health markers. But here's the problem. Studies estimate 40 to 60% of American men have low vitamin D. After 60, it's even higher. Why? Less sun exposure with age-reduced skin production of vitamin D more time indoors, northern geography, darker skin needing more sun exposure. What can you do? Testing is key. Ask your doctor for a 25-hydroxyvitamin D test. Research suggests optimal levels are between 40 and 60 nanograms per milliliter. If you're below 40, supplementation might help. Studies typically examine 2,000 to 5,000 international units of D3 daily but your doctor should determine your dose based on your test results. Vitamin D may work better with K2, which we just discussed. Number one, vitamin B12, methylcobalamin, the cellular health connection. B12 is essential for DNA synthesis and healthy cell division. Research suggests adequate B12 is important for maintaining proper cell growth patterns throughout the body. Studies found that men with low B12 show different cellular characteristics compared to men with optimal levels. B12 is crucial for methylation, a biochemical process that influences how genes are expressed. It's also linked with inflammation levels. B12 deficiency is associated with increased inflammation, which matters for prostate health. Here's the challenge. B12 absorption drops significantly after age 60. Stomach acid decreases naturally with age, and you need stomach acid to absorb B12 from food medications like metformin and acid reducers make it worse. Studies estimate 30 to 40% of men over 60 have low B12. What can you do? Ask your doctor about testing B12 levels. Optimal is generally above 400 picograms per milliliter, though some prefer above 600. If supplementing, methylcobalamin is better than cyanocobalamin. Methylcobalamin is active and ready to use. Cyanocobalamin requires conversion that gets less efficient with age. Studies look at 500 to 1,000 micrograms daily. B12 is water-soluble, so excess just gets excreted, making it quite safe. Sublingual forms that dissolve under the tongue bypass stomach absorption issues. Food sources include fish, poultry, eggs, and dairy. But if absorption is impaired, food alone might not be enough. We've covered eight vitamins, five that research raised concerns about at high doses, three that studies linked with better prostate health. 
Here's what to do with this information. Print it out. Take it to your doctor. Show them what you're currently taking. Ask about testing vitamin D and B12. Discuss whether any changes make sense for your situation. Your doctor knows your complete health picture. They can interpret this research in context of your medications, conditions, and individual needs. That personalized guidance is what really matters. Imagine walking into your next appointment prepared. You've done your homework. You have specific questions. You and your doctor create a plan together based on both science and your individual needs. You feel informed. You feel proactive. And over time, you see the results in your health markers. That's what it looks like to be an informed participant in your own health. Here's what to do next. Comment the word research below. Tell me which findings surprised you most. I'll send you a summary with study references you can review or share with your doctor. For the next 24 hours, I'll answer questions in the comments. If this was helpful, click like and share it with someone who might benefit. Subscribe for more research breakdowns like this. My next video covers foods that research has linked with prostate health. Remember, you're not alone in this. Millions of men are navigating similar concerns. The more informed you are, the better conversations you can have with your healthcare team, and that makes all the difference.